Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Fireteam Raven. At last, we can finally complete the Fireteam, thanks to the release of Halo Heroes Series 16. So, I decided, now that we've got the gang all together, it's about time to take a look at them as a team, instead of just separate Halo Heroes figures. So, let's go through, just kind of get another close look at each figure, and then we'll bring them all back together. The first member that Mega released is ODST Graves. Now, I believe this guy is the leader of Fireteam Raven, so it makes sense that Mega chose him to release him first. I remember seeing him in my target with the rest of Series 9. I think it was Series 9 with George and the Spartan Soldier and Captain Keys. Uh, and passing him up in favor of George, which I'm glad I did because George got really tough to get. Although recently, thanks to the release of the other members, uh, <laughs> Graves has gotten really hard to get. But he comes with an AR, pretty standard AR. It's just got some light gray print. It's a little odd on the top. It's like they didn't spray enough of the paint, so it's a little weird up on the top. But this is a nice generic weapon. You can put it on pretty much any figure, and it'll look pretty good. And then Graves himself has a lot going on. Now, I feel like Graves was made at a time when Mega was struggling a little bit to get really fine details down. But overall, this is pretty well done. We got a bunch of silver on the chest plate. We have a little UNSC logo. It says Graves, but it's a little off-center, kind of going off to the side. Um, and then we have some more silver down here. We have some silver on the shoulders. It's pretty well lined up. You can see it on both shoulders. The lower legs are printed uh, pretty well, actually. I wasn't entirely sure which color was the base color, but the blue is the base color, and then they printed the like lower boot section gray, which looks really good. And then we have this little rubber strap, ankle strap here, which is not the normal ammo strap thing. It's something else, uh, which we don't see used very often, but it looks pretty good. Head is done well, uh, the nice metallic on the both the stripe on the top and on the chin. And then the visor is a darker, kind of more uh, slick looking metallic. Around the back, not much in terms of prints, but you can see how the print for the boots wrap around. But the chest plate itself doesn't have anything on the back. So when this guy came out, he was really impressive. Um, the Halo Heroes figures sometimes had less detail than this, and even still a lot of the ODSTs that Mega releases has less detail than this. So this was a great way to start the Fireteam Raven collection, and it was just a good ODST to get if you just wanted to RB build some ODSTs and paint them up or something uh, at the time. Now he is very expensive and very, very difficult to get. Halo Heroes Series 11 introduced us to... ODST Lang. Now, ODST Lang, um, I have one major complaint, and I know all of you have heard this before. She uses the female torso that does not entirely work with the ODST armor. It doesn't go down all the way. It kind of stretch it, stretches it out. I don't know if it's as bad since this was pre-assembled in the factory. I, don't, I feel like the medic from the new pack, the new ODST Hive Exterminators, it was worse. But that's still pretty... Eh. It's not ideal. I really want Mega to do a female-specific ODST chest plate. That would be really nice. Um, but after after Graves, Graves was really well done. But then Lang kind of took things to a new level with the amount of print on the legs. And the way that it kind of is going all around and leaving sections open, um, it was pretty impressive. Obviously, you do have some overspill and I think a lot of them had overspill. You know, you get, you get that. I think Mega was trying something a little bit different here, a little bit new. They upped the amount of detail on the chest plate. You can see Lang on there. This is centered really well. There's all the little stripes. Shoulders have two colors this time. Still no print around the back of the torso, but the back of the legs have a lot of print, which is great. The helmet looks fantastic. I love the visor color. And then the extra bits of purple look pretty good. The bit on the chin, um, I'm trying to look at it. It's a little pale. It could have been used 
uh, could have used a little bit more, a little bit more there. And then the stripe on the top is done well, although it looks like mine got stuck to something while the paint was still wet. And then she came armed with a Magnum, which is fairly appropriate because, you know, CE and the Magnum was, that was kind of a big thing. So this was a great addition, um, something people were not really expecting, and it was a nice surprise. And it's just a good, unique figure. This purple is not something we see very often. So it was a very nice surprise. Fast forward to four Halo Heroes series later with series 15, we finally got ODST Ramos. Now, he kind of continued to up the bar because we got all of the massive amounts of print that we saw on uh, Lang, but we got even more this time. So the chest plate has a ton. Shoulders have a lot of nice print. You know, obviously there's still some bits that are off center. Like this one is a little too far back. Um, but the thigh armor got print. The legs got very similar print to Lang. But this time, it looks like they kind of perfected the printing process because there's not much overspill. We get the little UNSC logo. We get the name there. The head looks fantastic. The visor is just great. I love the green. The outline is good. We have a double stripe on the top of the head, which is great. And then we have the shoulder straps in silver, which go around to the back. So we finally have some back print on the torso. You can see some more of the print on the back of the legs, some more of the print on the shoulders. And then he came armed with a AR, similar to what we saw on Graves, but this time it has kind of a bronzy silver on black, which is pretty cool. It's a very nice mix. And at this point, I don't know if everyone was super surprised about seeing another highly detailed ODST. But it definitely was not something a lot of people were anticipating. So the fact that Mega finally decided to get rolling and um, bring us the other members of Raven is really good. I'm, I'm very happy that they decided to go with this. And the execution is done really well. After Halo Heroes Series 15, everybody was assuming that it would be another three or four Halo Hero series before we got the last member of Raven, which... You know, it was a pretty good assumption because that's kind of how it had been. It was, we had Graves in 9, and then we had 10 that went by. And then 11, we got Lang, and then we had 12, and then 13, and then 14, and then finally at 15, we got Ramos. But then Mega was like, you know what, we're done waiting. Series 16, there is Hudson. So the final member of the team in this really nice kind of like golden orange color looks fantastic. I believe this is... Mm, almost the same color as what we saw in like the Promethean uh, Strike pack, which his leg is popping off. Now, this guy had, out of all of them that I've seen, had the most quality control issues because when I first got him, this section had plastic in it. I don't know if I'm probably going to, yeah, I'm going to have to do something about that. His leg likes to pop out, which I can fix. I just need to make the little groove there a little bit bigger with some super glue and then his thigh armor is mismolded i don't think this will be widespread hopefully not but you know that is definitely something that is possible print wise though i feel like this guy might be the best yet he's got a lot of really small detail like these little golden like bronze bits this one's a little low but again there's always going to be those missed sections um, the shoulders have a lot of print going on, even more than we've seen on any of the other figures. UNSC symbol again, we've got these straps on the shoulders. The head is finally a different ODST head. It's the kind that Buck uses. We have a nice orange visor stripe here, a little bit of overspill from the black, but not bad. And then the kind of signature painted up sections, which again, Mega seems to have that pretty well down because it's all fairly sharp. Then we can see uh, the back, the uh, strap print around the back. And then the AR this time is in gray, but it still shares the same kind of bronzed silver that Ramos's AR has as well. So pretty nice figure. Might be my favorite out of the whole team. Um, you know, once I fix the weird knee issue. But yeah, overall, really, really, really good figure, and it was a huge surprise to see that Mega brought us the last member so quickly. 
having them all standing here as a team looks fantastic. The fact that they're all kind of color coded makes them work really well together. They're all playing off each other's colors and it just looks fantastic. Now, as as a representation of the team from the game, Mega has uh, flopped on a couple of aspects. First of all, each character had their own unique helmet, and that kind of carried into the armor a little bit. They had some slightly different armor attachments here and there. But also the backpacks. They all should have had backpacks, and Mega didn't give us any. I know the new ODSD backpack didn't come out until the Hive Exterminators, which that's understandable. I feel like Hudson could have had one, but it's kind of excusable that they didn't use it. However, they did have other backpacks that they could have been using, and I believe it's Hudson should have been using the bigger one like what George has. So it does feel a little sad that we didn't get any of their backpacks. Um, that's, that's a bit of a bummer. But you can definitely recognize what this team is supposed to be, uh, who they're supposed to represent, you know, aside from the names being on the chest plate. Uh, the colors are recognizable, the markings are recognizable. So even though they're not 100% accurate, I think Mega did a pretty good job. I am confused as to why they didn't at least do the backpacks. I understand not doing the unique helmets, but the backpacks, like that didn't seem like it would be that difficult to add a backpack for each figure if it was just an existing backpack. So that that's like the main bummer that I see. Um, aside from, you know, quality control issues coming up every now and then. But yeah, having them all together like this is absolutely fantastic. I definitely thought it would be a couple years at the least before I could do this, because I've always been wanting to do uh, a video of, of Raven. As soon as Ramos was revealed, I was like, all right, there's going to be a Raven review as soon as Hudson comes out. And Mega was like, ha, guess what? He's next up. So that was a great move on Mega's part. And it's great to finally have all of them together. The problem now is that it's been so long since Graves was released that Graves is pretty hard to get. Lang, mm, she's difficult in, sometimes, but you can you can find her without too much trouble. But Graves, Graves is running at like sixty plus dollars right now, and that's obscene, absolutely ridiculous, because the increased interest. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a bummer. It's a bummer to me that um, that's the the case now. That every time new figures are released, mega prices on the aftermarket shoot up. <clears throat> so that's a bummer. That that makes it very difficult to get the whole team now. Well, there you have it. That is the mega constructs versions of Fire Team Raven. Now, just in case you were a little confused and couldn't quite keep track of all the Halo Heroes series, this is how it goes. Halo Heroes Series 9, Halo Heroes Series 11, Halo Heroes Series 14, and Halo Hero 14, I'm sorry, 15, Halo Heroes Series 15, and Halo Heroes Series 16. So you have to buy them all separately, and since Mega just released Ramos and Hudson, I don't imagine they're going to do a full figure pack with these guys. Honestly, I'm not sure we'll ever see these guys remade but i could be wrong because halo universe puts everything on the table and mega has already shown that by making us uh, figures of characters like tarkov which nobody ever expected to get so i'm not saying it's never gonna happen uh it's just i i find it very unlikely that we'll see members of fire team raven come back anytime soon other than maybe a re-release of graves other than that i don't think we're going to see a figure pack or a set containing them i think that this is probably going to be it at least for a good long while um you can definitely upgrade these guys by using backpacks from the odst hive exterminators uh maybe giving them more unique weapons but you know it is a ce based game so i think the ars and the magnum are pretty appropriate i just think the backpacks are a big thing like mega why didn't you give us the backpacks it would have been one extra piece. Now, getting these guys on the aftermarket. These two, um, Ramos should be pretty easy to find. Well, easy is a relative term when finding any Mega these days, but easy in terms of, like, compared to Graves. This guy should be coming to shelves anytime now. Some places are already getting them. Some places probably won't see it for another couple months. 
Lang, I feel like Lang's kind of there. She's not super difficult to find. She's just kind of fairly standard for aftermarket Mega Constructs prices. And then Graves is ridiculously priced. Please don't overpay. I feel like 15 is tops for him. Anything more and you're being ripped off. It's just, it's just too much. So, if you're trying to hunt them all down, pay attention. Don't get scammed by paying ridiculous amounts. Um, Facebook Marketplace is a good place to look. New listings on Mercari, uh, in the Discord servers, stuff like that. Or trades. Trades especially could be helpful. But yeah, I would say it's definitely worth completing the team if you like ODSTs or if you just like Fireteam Raven. And for those of you who may not know, uh, I know I didn't know what Fireteam Raven was for a while. It's an arcade game that it's not a super widespread, but some places will have it where it's like you actually hold the gun thing that's attached to the machine and play it that way. It's like a split screen thing. That's where these come from, in case you didn't know. Definitely think it's worth completing the team if you can without overspending, um, but it's not worth paying 60 bucks to get Graves. Just get these two newer guys if you can't get the other two for a decent price because these guys are absolutely fantastic on their own. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.